Hi there, uh, John Kirsted from Art Expos Vancouver Island with another video uh, for you. Today we're going to be talking about filtration. Um, a lot of uh, uh, people realize that these are not like bathtubs. Hot tubs are going to have the same water in them for quite a long period of time and if you're on a salt system that could be a couple of years before you have to drain and fill the water. And so there's a few aspects uh, that we have to look after when we're looking after the, the water. First of all, we want to make sure that we have you know, safe water from a water chemistry point of view. So we want to have sanitizer in the water and we look after that with our maintenance program and spa boy and onsen and such. But there's also another component. A lot of the times in the water there's floating debris in there. Um, so it can be, it can be um, metals that have come out as precipitates and can form scale. Um, you, you know, those kind of look like a, almost like chalk in the water. Uh, sometimes you have just floating things like hair and skin, um, pine needles, all these other things that can be floating around in the water. And so we basically use a filter to screen that stuff out of the water. And it literally is just like a screen. So there's a number of different types of filters on the market uh, that I want to go through uh, with you. The first thing I want to do is when we first fill up the tub, the source water uh, often has a lot of suspended solids in it. So meaning there's stuff floating around in there already. Um, and it's most likely inert. Uh, sometimes it's not, meaning it could be something that could react in the water. Um, but what we find is if we get that stuff out of the water when you first start up, um, it's better. So a lot of times if you're on well water or you're uh, you know, pulling from the lake like I do at my house, um, different times of the year that source water can be quite different. And even in uh, Edmonton, I remember in the spring, the water that they uh, sent through the uh, pipes was not as clean from a visual looking point of view. It was safe, meaning you could drink it because it had enough chlorine in it to kill any bugs, but it still had a discolor, sometimes a dis uh, 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 unpleasant smell to it or otherwise. And so source water going into the spa is the first thing we gen generally try to address. So if you're on one of those uh, alternate systems where you've got your own well or you've got water coming in from a source that's not uh, publicly treated water. Um, sometimes it's better to have a water truck come in. If your water happens to be wonderful, then that's great, but in a lot of times uh, that can be its own set of problems. So it's good to get that water tested. Um, we do have some pre-filters. Um, these slow down the filling up a lot. Um, basically this screws on to the end of your hose. This is an activated carbon filter, so this is going to take some stuff out, but it's not going to take everything out. Um, we have some other ones, we call it, call it a metal trap. Um, it's designed specifically to remove metals uh, from the water, the source water. Same idea, screws to the end and you, you put it there and um, it pulls that stuff out of the, out of the water so your source water initially in your spa is a lot cleaner. Let's say that we've done that. Um, there's even some specialized ones now that they're coming out with that are remove phosphates from the water, you know, different ways, all with the idea of the initial source water is as clean as it can be. So assuming we've got clean source water, then over time we're going to be getting into this and what's on our bodies and what we excrete from our bodies when we sweat and otherwise, those are all contaminants in the water and some of that's going to be like skin, hair, um, you know, gels and stuff from our, uh, uh, from our hair products. Yeah, you can have uh, makeups and things like that. All that stuff that can get into the spa from customers using the spa, those are all contaminants. And so we want to collect that stuff. As well, the wind blows in dust, the wind blows in pine needles and little bits of things and stuff. So we want to screen those out of the water. And that's literally what uh, the filters are designed to do. And you'll see there's usually a skimmer uh, in, the, in the tub. Um, there's lots of different shapes. Sometimes you have like a flap. Uh, but basically in behind that you're going to see a filter. Now the most common type of filter that we see these days is still this ubiquitous um, pleated filter design. And basically this media, this filter media, is essentially a screen. You know, there's little, it's got holes in it and as the water passes, you know, the water gets drawn through the screen and particles get stuck in here and, and that's kind of been the way we've done it for a long time and then usually people have more than one of these and they'll clean one and then you know they'll soak it in a solution to degrease it then they'll use the high pressure of their hose to 
to uh, clean out all that stuff. You know, there's some fancy brushes and stuff that you can get to clean it. And these can last several years, especially if you have more than one of them and you're exchanging them. Um, so you take one out, put the clean one in, clean the other one, leave it to dry, then when you have to do it, you exchange them again. Uh, in uh, our classic series, we have one of those pleated filters. It's a shorty filter. And then we have this other style of filter, right? This is called a depth filter. So similar to this in that the media for this is one sheet that's bent so, or pleated, right? So it's bent and bent and bent and bent and bent, and, but it's still one layer. What this is, is that same sort of media, but it's wound on itself, sort of like a roll of paper towel. And so you get more and more layers of this media stacking up. So when water goes through this on a single pass, it's going through several layers of this. So it's getting filtered four or five times more than if you just went through a single layer. And what that does is, first of all, the holes become a lot smaller because as these uh, screens layer over top of each other, each hole becomes smaller and smaller. So this traps a much smaller particle. Whereas with a pleated, standard pleated style filter, this actually has to become dirty. As it becomes dirty, it clogs the holes and you get smaller and smaller holes. And so then it'll take all the big particles floating, then smaller particles, then smaller particles, then smaller particles. So actually as it gets dirty, it screens smaller and smaller particles. Whereas this will do that on a single pass. This will catch more of those particles in a single pass. Um, the advantage to this one is that you can clean it. So you can clean it like I mentioned earlier. With these ones, because the stuff gets stuck in those tiny little holes, you can't just backwash this or otherwise. There's too many layers. So this is a disposable filter. And these are usually good for about three to five months. Um, the Silver Sentinel, which is a proprietary depth filter to us, this actually has a layer, a silver media on the inside layer of this, just to add a little bit additional uh, disinfection. So when the water passes through this and goes back into the spa, the last layer that it goes through is this silver media on the inside of it. Um, because this can become the area where bacteria uh, likes to grow from because there's lots of food and stuff sources of food for it. So we want to make sure that doesn't get reintroduced to the spa water. So that's a depth filter. Um, in 2020, we introduced these uh, new style of filters. And as you can see, there's these bags, right? There's different bags inside here. And you'll see there's different layers. And each layer of this is designed to screen a different size particle. Um, there are some real advantages to this, um, but it's a little bit tricky for some. So you see we've got like a standard version and we got a high flow version. The media inside this one has got uh, uh, larger holes in the media. So it can allow higher flow through there. And generally what we do on our custom series is we'll have one of each. So this is gonna screen smaller particles. This will screen larger particles and we'll end up getting them out of there. Now you noticed I popped this little thing out of the top. When you first get your spa, because it's just been filled up with source water and new users have a tendency to put more pressure on the water, we have this little, we call rescue bag. So this little rescue bag, this is designed so for the first week or so, sometimes even in a, a couple of days, this can clog up um, depending on the source water. So if you're like uh, Shawnigan Lake where I live, the source water there has a lot of uh, suspended um, sawdust because there used to be a sawmill there. And so all in the bottom of the lake, there's this layer of, of uh, basically slowly dissolving sawdust, right, or silt, and that silt gets caught in, in this, and it'll clog your filter up very quickly. So we use this very fine media on top for a week. You can then rinse this out, um, and then the next time you fill up your spot, or if for some reason something got spilt in there, you could add this back in there and use it again at another time. But it's designed to just be removed, and then you just leave the filter like this in there. Same with the other side, same sort of thing. It's exact same setup. Um, and that's what's used on the, the 2020 tubs. Now, we did have customers that were having problems with these clogging up too quickly because normally these, these will last up to six months. And I have several people that these last uh, eight, nine months even. But it really depends on the source water and the type of contamination that the water is getting. 
So we've even come up with a new version that's just starting to be introduced called a combi filter, which literally has uh, this setup like this built inside there and then another media around the outside of that that's designed uh, using a very porous natural material called perlite, which also uh, traps lots of uh, suspended solids and such in the wire. And that combi filter, that's uh, gonna be available uh, starting March, 2023. Um, we've been running long-term tests. We've been testing that product now for over a year, just to make sure that for people that have issues with the filters not working quite the way they want, that combi filter we've been using and we found not only did it uh, make the water much clearer, which is measured by turbidity. It managed to still keep good flow uh, for, the, for the tub and, and for your jets and stuff. And so that's one of the things that can happen. So people often ask us, well, when do I know if this filter is, needs to be changed or otherwise? Well, one of the things is, is you'll notice the flow uh, out your jets might be restricted. Um, sometimes the top side controls will actually give an error that says, oh, there's a flow error, something's restricting flow. Well, that could mean that the ducky's gotten in the way of the suction or something's blocked the suction or otherwise, but a lot of the times it just means that the filter's gotten clogged and you need to put a new filter in there or a clean filter in there. Um, and so that's one of the things you're gonna be looking for. Um, on most of the spas, we can set a timer that says, hey, check this out. And in fact, in your app and stuff, it'll actually have a picture of your, a lot of times I'll have a picture of your filter, um, but it works on time. So that's not necessarily, until we have actual flow sensors in the spas um, that sense the amount of flow through the filter, and we're not gonna get an accurate read of, does the filter really need to be changed? So you just have to be mindful. If your skimmer basket, if the basket of the skimmer keeps sucking down and keeps sucking down, um, and it won't stay up and skim the surface, that usually means that the filter's clogged, right? And that needs to be cleaned or changed. Remember that if the water is not going over the top of the skimmers, there is no water going through the filters and it is time to replace them. Um, so that's what you're gonna be looking for when, when uh, you're thinking about, do I need to change this? I tell people, you should check your filter you know, once every month or so. Um, if you're using a pleated filter, you might wanna just, you know, you just take a look at it. Does it look like it's dirty? Um, is, the, is the skimming action of your spa being affected? Um, like I said, most of the time, most of the time the, uh, the skimmer will be a good indication as well as the various codes and stuff. And I, I have a, like on some of them, I'll set a timer that says check your filter every month. So they'll check the filter to see that it's okay. And then give it a quick rinse. Sometimes just rinsing it, giving it a quick rinse, putting it back in, that can buy you another couple months uh, before you have to, to, uh, to actually get that in there and clean it, right? Um, the disposable style filters, are not cleanable. Um, you can rinse the, the rescue bag, like I said, but you can't, um, you can't uh, clean them forever and it'll slowly, the material over time will degrade and you'll need to get a new one. You can buy these separately. As well for the, uh, the uh, active skim filtration system, um, in that skimmer, we have a rescue bag available for that that actually attaches to the underside of the, the skimmer. Um, and I should have actually uh, brought one of those to show you, but it's just a bag similar to this. It's a bag that screws in and it literally floats down uh, with the skimmer and uh, traps debris in there. Um, I also use those rescue bags uh, when I'm having a party or something like that. I'll just use the rescue bag because when you put new users in here, you're gonna put lots of additional contaminants in there. I just wanna get that out of the water right away. And I'll take these main filters, I'll even take those out and just rely on the rescue bag uh, to do my filtration for that period of time. Also, you may have seen one of my other videos where we remove uh, small suspended particles uh, from the water using a clarifier. Well, if I use a clarifier, and I keep these filters in there, it's gonna clog these up. Now that's not a big deal if it's one of these filters because if you clog this up, you can rinse it off, you can degrease it and reuse it. But if it's one of these style of filters and I use that clarifier, it's gonna plug this thing up and you're gonna have to throw this out. So in that case, I would use the rescue bag instead. And again, you can rinse the rescue bag a few times just like this and reuse it uh, more than once. I've used mine five, six times and, and uh, uh, it's quite easy to rinse out because it's just a single layer. You know, it's when we wrap that on 
where there's multiple layers, you could rinse off the stuff on the outside, but you can't get the stuff on the inside. So that's why you can't reclean these. And these are recyclable. It's, uh, this is 100, even the top pieces here and the media are all polypropylene. So it is uh, recyclable. Uh, and that's, that's really the differences. Now you'll see, maybe you have a different brand of spas, not an Arctic spa, um, that uses a combination. I've seen a lot of filters now, what they've done is they've done this. So they'll have a filter that's like this. So part of it's this and part of it's a depth filter. So you got some component. And it's the same as we've done by separating it. They've included it into one one filter um, and then a lot of times these specialty filters can cost a tremendous amount of money some filters cost more than two hundred dollars for one filter um, and so i tell people you know if you have a choice trying to use the more generic filters when you can is going to be a little less money um, or get something that's going to last a really long time like i think the new combi filter could last up to a year um, so you might pay more for that filter but it should last a lot longer um, and that's really the, the differences you're going to see on filters that are out there. What's the difference between the tall and the small one? Why would you use the small one? Um, just, uh, it's just the, the doesn't, you don't need much of this media to catch the larger pieces of material. You could put in this one instead of this one. There's no uh, issue there. You can always go with a slightly shorter filter. You just have a little less media, but you can't go with a taller one, right? Um, we've chose this just from an economical point of view. It's less money for the customers to start off with, but functionally it's the same. This is only going to have maybe 15 square feet of media, you know, or 25 square feet of media. This is going to have, you know, 75 square feet of media, and this will have like 800, 900 square feet of media. So you've got a lot more actual screening material in the product. Um, some of these you'll see are, are more tightly uh, put together. Um, so they'll have like this is, I think they call this a 25 square foot. They, yeah, 25 square foot, uh, 75 square foot. There's a lot more pleats in here and it, much more congested. Um, I've found that the 25 square foot filters actually do a better job because they allow more flow initially. So you can get that big stuff out. When you have these uh, media too close together, sometimes the flow just between the media isn't as good. Um, that's, ex you know, that's something that you can experiment. Again, it really depends a lot on your initial source water. So source water is going to make a big difference. Um, the cleaner the source water that you first fill up, because you're going to use that water for several years you, on an Arctic running a salt system, um, you're going to want to have a, a really good filtration system to make sure it stays clean uh, of floating particles and suspended solids during that time frame. On a traditional maintenance program, you're changing your water every three to six months. And so they usually tell customers, you know, when you change, do your drain and fill uh, and set up your chemicals, check your filter, clean it, make sure you do it at that time. So it gets checked more often than say on an Arctic where you're not draining and filling it all the time. Um, and that's one of the advantages. Um, but sometimes people forget that they even have a filter. So we just wanted to remind you that you do have a filter and you do need to check it from time to time. Uh, I'm John Kirstead from Arctic Spas Vancouver Island talking to you about filtration. If you have any questions, be sure to uh, talk to one of the smart friends at one of the stores. Uh, they'll be happy to help you out or send us a message online and we'll get back to you there. Thank you for taking the time to watch our videos and if you haven't already done it, be sure to subscribe.